Hey, Adam and Allison. So nice to have you both on the show with me. Hey, Bill. Hey. And uh, I think I mentioned to everybody leading into uh, this panel was that uh, Allison is, is on the road and she's actually outside at a venue, mooching off Wi-Fi so she can be here with us today. So it's, uh, it, it really, you know, you're really going all out to, to hang out with us this afternoon. Well, if it, if it doesn't work, let me know. And if there's too much conflicting background noise, let me know. Well, there is a bit of wind on your mic. So if you're not talking, you might want to mute. Oh, all right. You, you would like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> it is a beautiful day wherever you're at, though. So, uh, you know, this is it's been a long time since we've uh, been able to get together. I, I, I feel like I haven't seen you guys in five or six years of shows. And partially that's my fault. I haven't gone out uh, to San Diego in a long time and um, I really haven't got, done a lot of shows. And of course, the last two years with the pandemic, none of us have done any shows. So, uh, you know, that's that's not been great for uh, for business. But the one thing before we got started, I just wanted to thank you both for all the support that you guys have done for the shows that I've been doing since the pandemic, because, you know, you, you've, uh, you've always, uh, Allison, you've always been supportive of everything we've done on CAF. And, you know, I just can't, uh, can't thank you guys enough for, for always exhibiting. And, you know, you always try to draw a lot of people into the show to see your art and, and, you know, it leads out to the other exhibitors and artists that are, that are showing as well. And, you know, it really means a lot. These last two years have been challenging for everyone. And, uh, you know, through these, through Comic Art Live and these opportunities that we've done through these virtual cons, I think it's really it's helped the hobby, it's helped help the collectors, it's helped the artists, and um, you know, and I think they're here to stay now. We're going to keep doing these. I think the events are great, and I mean, I've been a member of Comic Art Fan almost since you guys launched, and I've made so many friends through your site. Um, so I, I mean, being able to still participate and support everything you do is, you know top of my list of priorities so I'm, I'm real happy to be here and to be helping out well like i say it's a pleasure and uh, and i do hope we get to, to see each other again sometime soon i know that um you know as we've we've talked you know lots of things have changed for you guys as far as what you're working on but you did bring a fair amount of original comic art to your panel and uh, there were a couple sketch covers out there i actually have not had a had a single moment really to browse the hall to see what things look like after at the time of launch i, I just kind of i checked out your booth yesterday evening just to kind of see where it was at but other than that I, so i hope you've sold a few pieces of art today and that uh, you know things are going well within the booth even uh, even though you're on the road today we actually did really well um we've sold a significant amount of art um considering we don't have a whole lot left like you said you know we brought adam's comic art and for those that aren't aware adam's had a little bit of a career change and comic art isn't going to be his primary work let alone like any work so what we've got up there is sort of the last mm -hmm. well that's that's sad but you know business is business right i mean it you kind of uh during the pandemic i'm sure that you know that kind of opened your eyes as a need to maybe branch out and try different things and then sometimes opportunities just come along and uh, you, you got to go where where, where uh, you know you're you want to kind of steer your career into a different path. I mean, if the if the opportunity is that good, and it sounds like that was what it was. I mean, right? I mean, to to leave comics, hopefully temporarily, um, you know, is had to have been not a very easy choice for 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 Adam or for you, really, to see that happen. Well, um, hey, sweetie, could you mute? The wind is blowing. Uh, thank you so much. Um, it's not. I I haven't left forever, and I haven't even left completely um i've just left doing it full time mm -hmm. um and uh you know allison do you think we should should mention it is this a spot to, to talk about it no you can't talk about any of this stuff you're under an nda i, I i'm not going to talk about like you know the stories and stuff like that but can i say what i'm doing no okay you can he works for disney he does character design that's well, all you can say well, technically, I work for Marvel Studios Animation. So said too much. you said too much. That said, everybody has to sign an NDA now. There we are, and a, and a, and a DNR. Um, Backs it over. I'll, I'll uh, sign mine right now. No, I'm I'm doing some I'm doing design work for Marvel Studios. Uh, technically, I work for Disney, but I'm you know, I'm still working on comic book characters. So it's uh, um, uh, I, there's an opportunity here for me to learn some stuff. You know, I, some people probably know this about me. I'm self-taught. 
And my work schedule over the, especially over the pandemic has not allowed me to, you know, pursue new techniques or styles or, or try different things out. And I thought this was a good opportunity. It's like, it's like going to school, but somebody's paying you to do it. And I thought that was the smartest way. Wow. So this is a, you know, so it's a great learning experience for yourself. It's, yes. I mean, you don't even look at it as work, really. You're just, you're, you're going back to school, you're learning a new skill set. Yes. And probably getting to work with a lot of interesting people at the same time. Very interesting. I mean, you know, I, it, it was, it was a company wide thing, but this morning I got an email from Kevin Feige and for two seconds, I was like, Ooh, ooh, ooh I'm special. Uh, <laughs> it was just, they all have a happy, have a happy Memorial day. But I was just kind of like, I get emails from Kevin Feige. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, congratulations. At the end of the day, as self-employed people, you know, myself included, it's always great when you're able to kind of follow your passions and you get in and new opportunities like that present themselves and, and you have the courage to follow them and, and give it and try them out. I mean, I think that, that that's uh well, that, there's my courage. There's, she was the one that, that convinced me that I needed to do it. So, um, you well, know, I, you, I, you had some really, you had people that you really admired reach out to you and say, we want you. And that's also, you know, it's not like human resources called and said, you know, we'd like to make you an offer. These were other artists that you really think highly of saying, we think you can bring something. And I think it's been a really long time since you've had an opportunity like that. And that was really key, I think. There you go. There, see, you've, yeah, you, you've, you were very succinct there, Allison. That's, uh, but that's great, though. I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited for you both because I'm always, you know, looking for that next opportunity, the next thing that you know is going to excite me and keep me really interested in what's going on. That's why Comic Art Live really came at a very opportune time for me. I was, I was literally looking for work when, uh, when the pandemic started, just because, and not because I was bored with CAF or the hobby or anything like that. I just wasn't really challenged as. Uh, as a as a business person anymore you know and calf was kind of stagnant and uh and then along came COVID, and and it just opened my eyes to so many different opportunities that we could do with the site and you know inventing these things on the channel and doing fun things there and it really helped re-engage me with with calf and the hobby and and just pushed me in a totally different direction so i mean I, you know, again I, I know what you're, i know you're feeling and that's great but kevin feige isn't uh, isn't sending me emails so uh, you're in a much better <laughs> spot than i am yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and him were, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, that's nothing him. wrong with that. That's me. So. Uh, <laughs> that, but so that's fantastic. And, and also, it's great that you guys are having such a good uh, show today as well with the sales and everything. I think, you know, it's, we've really just gotten started. But uh, I know that we crossed the like a half million in total sales after about two and a half hours of the show starting. Wow. So another two and a half hours have already passed or so. So I think. I think we're gonna have a good show this this time around we all, fantastic and, yeah isn't that i mean it's it's amazing it really is and uh, i i can't thank everybody enough and again it, it would start on both sides if you don't have the buyers you don't have the sellers and and you know so for you to participate and uh for these uh, for the, the attendees to come along and pick up artwork i mean it just makes it fun and and these virtual events are again i i, I mean we're going to keep doing them i thought for if, if if this was a bad turnout because you know we're up against megacon we're up against uh, a couple other regional shows as well that uh, I was thinking if this thing didn't work, I was just going to switch and do these once a year. But I, now that I see this, I'm, if we can do this one and Megacon's going on, which is a pretty sizable show, I know that we could do this pretty much uh, twice a year and not have to worry about uh, Well, what, what's nice is people can do Megacon and this. You know, you can just sit there that and true. you can go back to your hotel room or you can go out to the lobby, the very large lobby where all the kids sit and eat their Pocky. Uh, uh, at MagnaCon, and uh, the wife is frowning. What's wrong? Sorry, I'm getting um, lag and all sorts of Wi-Fi issues, but uh, I didn't mean to frown. So obviously, you guys can still see me, even if I can't see you. Oh, okay. um, yes, we can. Um, uh, but I mean, uh, yeah, the biggest conflict is obviously my dog events. So you know, as as long as uh, I can still do it from dog events, I think anyone can do this from MegaCon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're it's not like you're at, you know, CAF and, you know, oh, no, I've got to go to the bathroom. You know, it's like it's like it's all virtual. It's all you just you, you just you just you just rope it in with what you're what else you're doing, be it Megacon or a dog show that's, or, yeah. you know, sitting in the dark it. like me. That's uh, that's yeah, that's interesting because I was watching the site stats earlier today and 
half of the people who were attending the, the, the show were on a mobile device, which isn't the usual norm, normal percentage. So mm. you're probably absolutely right. There could be people at MegaCon who tuned in right when they were able to gain access to the hall and, and were picking up art or at least browsing things for sale. So gosh, you know, I, I never even really thought about it like that. I, I, I always felt like people had to be sitting down in front of their computer to, to just pour over, you know, the artwork but they really don't. All right. I mean, and, and here I am, I'm the internet guy and, and, and Adam, you've just, you, you've just educated me on why the show can, I, can still, can still, can still be successful even once cons are full time. Well, sometimes you future people can learn from us cavemen. And, uh, you know, I mean, I just think about it, think about, think about like, you know, somebody in a tremendously long line to get an autograph, they've got nothing to do. And yeah, Oh really? yeah. Today, today's that, today's that, you know, TAF auction or art sale. He, it's 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 a win-win for everybody you know because uh i mean i've been to mega con a million times and there are times where it gets slow mm -hmm. and you're just like i just need to sit it's it's all you know we all know that, that now it's like you can't sit still you got to look at the little black mirror and uh this is at least uh you know some fun content for them no i agree that's uh but yeah this, this is great well let's talk a bit you know okay so we can't talk about your project uh with the uh with that company but you know, you, you've you've been producing covers for so long that I mean, I, I, I've always you know, I, I, this is what I want to say. My wife loves your work. I mean, she every time because she's the programmer for CAF, right? And she was like pointing stuff out in, in your your booth before the show. She's like, look how nice that is. Look how nice that is. You know, and and I and I'm like, what, you know, what are you doing browsing Adam's CAF, uh, you know, booth before uh, <laughs> before the show even starts? But she yeah, but she's programming and checking things. But she you always uses your uh, you know, your guys booth as her reference point, because she just, she just admires your work. She, she, she got me a sketch from you. Probably the first sketch I ever got was uh, thanks to her, but uh, she's always been a huge fan. Oh, well, that helps me to understand how there were likes on the artwork before the show opened. Cause I was like, who's yeah. looking at this artwork? And there were absolutely likes on the files. And I was like, who's been in here? This isn't open till tomorrow. <laughs> That, well, because we were doing all these tests on uh, on how to re remarket things, and so she was probably going into yours and setting the likes on stuff so that she could run her tests on things. Because you know, we, we built in some tools so that an exhibitor, say ten people save or like that artwork tomorrow, maybe you still have it for sale. You could drop the price by ten percent or something, and then send out an email to those people. So she was probably using your booth as a place to to, to test all that programming. So. I, Sorry for the alarm. There was nobody in there but her no, or I. I figured she, at some point it would resolve itself and, you know, no harm done. So. Yeah. Or, she, or she just likes it. I mean, it could be as simple as uh, <laughs> we don't need to like, we don't need to sort of explain the the, the, the random love that's thrown my way in the world. Uh, so hush, other <laughs> other topics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, she's she's been a big fan and, and you know, and she, she loves comics and comic art, but she's she could take take the art or leave it but for your stuff she's always been uh she's always appreciated it she loves uh she loves your sense of humor that's what she always says i think when she texts me she's like adam is so funny he's got so i love his his uh you know his view of the world and the way he uh he approaches <laughs> these covers and i I'm like yeah you you know at least she's got good taste right right there you go S says her husband <laughs> yes yeah exactly but um so, you know, one of the things when I always think about you guys, I, I always, you know, I've known you for a long time, you know, 20 years at least. And uh, what I what I always think about one of the coolest contributions that you've done, you've both done to the hobby and was was kind of, kind of how you you set the standard on what convention prices should be way back in the day. And I know that there were lots of factors in that uh, in, in the decisions for doing that, you know, negative things going on with people flipping artwork after cons and everything. But I think that you guys took some really bold early steps with the way you, you know, you you approached your business, and you know, you, when you really looked at it and said, you know, we, we, artists need to make a fair, uh, uh, you know, wage for the time that they spend on the work that you do in cons. It's you know, it's it, it's good to be in front of the fans, but it's also proper to be paid for you know the the work that you do, and you know, I think that in a lot of ways, you you guys really helped kind of set in motion just you know the artists just valuing their their time a little bit better and, and it's it, i think it's been a great thing for the hobby because um you know it really it, it in its in its own odd way you know you think raising prices should turn people away and it didn't what it really did was it it, it got more people interested in getting con commissions and convention sketches and 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 meeting their uh you know their comic art heroes at shows and picking up art from from them i think 
you know, and I, I always felt like that was a real big turning point. You know, initially it felt like a negative because it's like, wow, you know, you guys are raising prices. But at the end of the day, I, you know, I look back on it now, say 15 years later after that happened, and the hobby is such a better place for it, for, for everyone, for collectors and for the artists that are that are producing, you know, work to, to be sold, whether it's published or not. And I really have always looked at the both of you as the ones who helped get us get that ball rolling and have kept that momentum, you know, going forward when, you know, you evolved what you were doing at cons uh, with the with the pricing there to just doing a select number of pieces at a show. I mean, all of those things were really innovative and ahead of their time. I mean, you know, people didn't ad adapt to or adopt those sorts of uh, uh, approaches to going to shows and whatnot for years after you guys did. So, you know, kudos to the both of you for, for, for doing that, because I, I do feel like it's made the hobby very, very strong. And you look at where we're at today, uh, you know, I always felt like once the pandemic started, we were going to have this serious decline in prices and artwork available and everybody got creative and they found other ways to get their artwork out there. And, you know, and, and again, I, there's a lot of reasons I love this hobby, but I, I always fall back on and looking at what you guys did at that point in time. And it, it, it really was so much the, you know, it was the right thing to do and it, and it made things great for all of us. So. Well, I think, you know, as much as people loathe the rising prices and, you know, for everyone that says, Oh my God, I have this sketch. There is, 15 people that go, I can no longer afford them. And that always breaks our heart just a little bit. But the continual growth of our our, our pricing or our, 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 our industry in this regard, it validates the art as a genuine art form. It's mm -hmm. no longer that thing that little kids read. And it's not that, oh, what is it? What does your son do? Oh, you know, he draws those funny books. No, this is real art. And, you know, there has to be that kind of growth for people to be able to appreciate it as a real art form. And, you know, the most extreme example being, of course, when you see these heritage auctions selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars and even breaking, you know, the million dollar mark. Um, would that have happened had we all still just been like, oh, I got a page for $25 in the basement of, you know, this convention? Mm. Probably not. You know, we had to create an environment in which people were willing to pay the money for the artwork to be acknowledged as worthwhile. Well, and that's big. To be fair, the um, the flippers helped because, you know, you'd sell somebody a, a, a sketch for $50 and then it would turn up on eBay two weeks later for $500. And you're going, why is that person? Not two weeks later, we would sell it that morning and that night it would be online right. for so I, that, much more. I know that's true, but that just sounded unrealistic. So I, I thought I. Um... It happened every convention, and I used to take it so personally. I used to take it as a personal failure if I hadn't properly screened the list to mm -hmm. make sure that the art got into hands of fans. And that's one thing I'm really glad I have left behind me. It's not personal, it's business. And everybody, I, I can't get everybody a sketch. There's only one Adam and there are only so many hours in the day and his fingers only work so fast. And that's just it. You know, there's a lot of things I want in life that I'm not going to get either. Um, so be it. And I'm sorry, like it, it, it's not awesome. I know how much it means to a lot of folks. Um, there's artwork I would love to own that I'm never going to. Um, but there are brand new artists coming out and I can check them out and I can I can add their pieces. You know, I got Chris Yaminga's before Chris got comic work. I got Agnes Grabowska before she got comic work. Um, you walk those artist alleys and you can pick up artwork from the next generation of, of artists that are going to hit it big. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to break your bank. You don't have to always be buying. I mean, I love that. I love just buying art because I like it, not because it's somebody that made a big name for themselves or a big splash or... The worst one is the folks that don't want to buy something because their friends don't think it's worthwhile. Stop listening to other collectors. Stop listening to your friends. What do you like? Like, mm -hmm. find something you enjoy or your family enjoys or your kids really dig. Or in your case, what does your wife like? Like, that's great. This can be a hobby that we share. She likes uh, she, she likes yep. Does she want him? Because, like, he might be up for sale tomorrow, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it, but yeah, I did it. You wow. know, and it was there were a lot of people who were disappointed, wow. but uh, but you know, we all had to kind of evolve along with that. And and but I but I agree with you because I've always 
wondered when we were when the the hobby was going to kind of reach this point where they are it really is hanging in museums and we're seeing more gallery and in museum shows regularly for comic art illustration you know whether it's you know someone uh, modern or, or not but you know it, we're, we're finally there the, the medium has been legitimized it just took a lot longer than some of us really felt but but i think that setting those price points helped it along i mean you took it from being a you know while, while there was a reason for doing it to keep it out of the flipper stands at the same time that that kind of started moving prices to places where people had a you know question of whether or not they're going to buy a piece or not or pass on of buying something this time and wait for the next piece but all, but that really helped set everything to a position where where we're at today where you know the art has gotten to those uh, those prices that are just in some ways they're shocking but i mean i i'm fe i feel very gratified to know that there's artwork i can't afford now because it should have it should be like that you know it should be in those places where you can't you can't afford everything and and as a collector I, I like the fact that I have to look around for that next rising star. Like you said, Agnes, you know, Grabowski, she, she was at, uh, at Megacon and I've seen her work before, but I'd never seen it. Uh, I've seen it on cap. I'd never seen it in person. So I, I, I stopped her table. I didn't buy anything, but I really enjoyed looking at it because I hadn't, hadn't seen it before in person. So you know, uh, I, found yeah. her, I found her online. She had an online store from something that doesn't, that does not even exist anymore. And she was doing pet art and she drew our dog Tonks and put it on a coffee mug for me. And I've got wow. this great graphic design image of one of our old English sheepdogs from, I think, 13 years ago that Agnes did in this shop that she she created, you know, vector art of pets. So, yeah, that, that was where I first saw Agnes's work. Um, but, you know, we also we talk about these rising prices and we talk about um, how collecting comic book art and the pricing we set has changed sort of... Um, the global landscape of art collecting itself. You know, when I, a, a millennia ago, when I graduated college, I did my thesis on comic art versus fine art, high art versus low art, and what the real difference was in comparison points. Um, you know, today they don't question it. They don't question the prices. And when my dog breeders ask me, what was that about that? 1.5 million dollar piece of comic book artwork showing selling last week i'm like where did you hear about that and they do or you know folks here at the dog show they, they're like so are you doing san diego comic-con this year how come you guys no longer set up a dragon con how do you know these things like it it's filtering into mainstream at a much more rapid rate than i ever expected you know and i i do think that you know when we get these prices it's newsworthy and that's when, you know, as we call them, you know, the, the Johnny Lunchboxes and the, you know, Susie Homemakers, you know, they sit up and they take notice. The non-comic interested um, people, they want to know what's going on. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And it's, uh, you know, I run into people, I, I had, a, had a roofer come over to this new house I bought in Florida. And, you know, I, he, I had, I think I had my comic art fans t-shirt on. He's like, you like comic books? And, you know, I mean, it's my, it's a roofer, right? He's coming here to give me a quote. And yet, uh, you know, he was so happy. He, 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 was, he lived down the road. So the, the next day, even though he was, he had already given me the quote, he, he dropped by just to show me a, a box of books that he had recently bought. So, yeah. so yes, this, you know, comic book collecting comic you know, and the comic art that goes into those books, it has really become mainstream. And, yeah, you know, I had my portfolio, so I opened it up. I'm like, well, I, you know, this is what I do, and you know, he was he was fascinated. And but then he's riddling off names. I mean, I think I'm thinking he's just a casual guy, right? And he's he's talking about, uh, you know, oh, I love Mike Mayhew. You know, I love Trevor Harrison, and you know, and I'm like, gosh, I didn't think, you know, I, I figured he was still casual. But then he starts naming creators, and that's really cool because, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people just read the books to read the books, but he was naming artists, and that was a shock to me, you know, because again, I just, you know. It, it's the last guy that you would expect. It's like it would be the auto mechanic. You know, he's the guy that knows everything about uh, original uh, art, art artists today. And it's just uh, it's it's kind of mind boggling because it certainly didn't feel like this uh, 20 years ago when I started. There's a dog. There's a, a guy here at the we're at a dog agility trial. And every time I see him, he's wearing a dark Phoenix T-shirt, one of many by Arthur Adams. And it come come to find out, I think his dog's name is Phoenix. And I kind of want to pull him aside and be like, I have dinner with that guy. Like I know him, his wife and I chat on the phone and I don't, I totally don't even do that. I'm like, your dog runs great. Like nice job. 
Yeah, Tariq popped in and said that he, that he missed you both going to Como last week, but hopefully you can make it again sometime in the future. I know that uh, I used that picture from you guys from Como as well for uh, for this. But, yeah, that's you had to miss that basically because your new schedule, right, Adam? I assume that that's kind of what's been impacting your uh, – uh, Yeah, out. yeah. It's, you know, being a uh, being a nine-to-fiver uh, is, uh, is, is weird because I haven't done it since the late 1980s. And uh, it was one of those things you're like, what, wh what can we do? When can we do it? Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's all new. I, I only started at the end of February. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I mean, I really wanted to go to Como because that's one of my favorite shows ever in the world. But, uh, you know, stuff happens. Yeah. No, but, well, Steve puts on a good show. He really does. I mean, he's it's a terrific show. And, you know, I'll pimp Comic it's, Art fans all day long. But the Lake Como Comic Art Festival is a bucket list thing. Like if mm -hmm. you, it's not a comic show at all. It is a glamorous vacation that you can take your girlfriend or your fiance or your wife or your spouse to. Um, you can schmooze with your favorite creators. Find If you're in America, you will find European creators you have never heard of if you're like me and just be blown away in the most gorgeous setting and have this amazing time like i bought art i had a terrific time um it's very low key so collectors pull up chairs and hang out you know Tarek, we, we i think we met Tarek there and we've been buddies since a lot of those folks that first year we still correspond with we still look forward to hearing to from and we're sorry we didn't get to see them it's an incredible event and if if anyone hasn't been just start you know put aside a, a, a piggy bank and start saving it is so worth going out of your way to attend that event well it's on my bucket list i can tell you that and, and if i go uh, maureen better be going with me because <laughs> that would be a, it, to me it's not something you could do i could do every year yeah. but if i could get out there and you know do it next year i would i would love for the opportunity i mean steve yeah, wanted to go out too but it's it's just tough i've told a lot of folks because we i do a ton of research i'm that lady that likes to buy travel books so anyone who brings a partner with them, husband or wife, that isn't into comics, hit me up and I will tell you all the cool places they can go. I've still got all the maps for the ferries, all the neat places to eat. I told Steve I would throw together a list as well of just, you know, while your spouse is off blowing your money on art, let me send you to some place where you can have an equally good time. Right. Well, that's the best thing about it. I, th I think some, you know, because back when we owned Big Wow, it was with, with Steve as well. I mean. He, he really made it a destination and, and not just, uh, you know, so that the, the artists that would come out or the or comic creators, you know, he always wanted people to stay later, make it a trip, you know, involve your significant other in the, in these types of things. And that really, it's just a different approach to, to putting on a show. And, you know, he just really has a, a wonderful you know approach to that. And I've, I've always, I've always, uh, if I ever were to do a show, I'd want to kind of follow the same, an in-person show. I'd want to follow that same kind of mindset, you know, put it in some place where people want to go um, because that's just good for the, the attendees too. I mean, they look at, you know, you, you as creators look at, at that trip as a, as a once in a lifetime or hopefully three or four times in a lifetime kind of trip. And uh, so, you know, the, the attendees are going to look at it the same way. So, um, so yeah, no, Steve's, Steve's fantastic with that. And I know he's partnered with Arnold and, you know, and they've uh, just put together a phenomenal show. Uh, there's a question here that says uh, they, EC Harris got here late. Why is Adam being forced to work nine to five? Well, first off, he's not working nine to five. He's working whatever hours he wants. But the clock stops at 40 hours, which is so exciting because that is not freelance. You know, yeah, I'm Adam, not I, I'm not allowed to work 41 hours a week. Uh, so uh, uh, if you're late, then, you know, I'm, I'm trying something new. Just after 35 years in comics, I just decided to to go someplace and learn some stuff. So I accepted an offer from the Walt Disney company. And I, I, I am now a concept designer for Marvel studios animation. Uh, also the benefits package was insane. We've never had that. Like there's a retirement fund, the word retirement. We had to look it up in the dictionary. We didn't even know what that was. Yeah, I think um, our, I, I think our pets have optical insurance now. I mean, it's pretty weird, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I'm just I'm drawing stuff that I never really drew before, and I'm learning uh, learning some new new programs, and and uh, you know, and I get to see stuff that nobody else will get to see for years. 
That's true. Speaking, but no, speaking of that, I, though, so we can't share any of Adam's art at this time, but once the project is done, like I've seen other guys that do similar work that once something is done that art, they can show it. I really look forward to when people can see some of this stuff because I'm Adam's wife and I'm Adam's rep, but I met Adam because I was an enormous fan of his work. I was buying, you know, um, Ghost when I was in high school. And I'm so excited for people to see this work because it's a whole new chapter and it's exciting and it's invigorating and gee whiz, it's pretty. It is so darn pretty looking. I think you guys are going to really dig it. Now, will that eventually also lead to art sales for whatever that is? Or is this type of stuff that you're not, you're not able to sell because of the type of work that you're doing? Nikki says we're not allowed to sell the art. That's Dude. hard. That was hard to swallow. Wow. I know. Like, well, so, oh, so, you know so, if you're getting paid well, then you know, then you don't need the answer. Oh, yeah. We, no, we, no, we, 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 so, we factored that into the negotiations. It's, and, well, that's good. I, I, I am being compensated. And hopefully down the road somewhere, you know, there'll be an opportunity maybe to renegotiate a contract. Mm. Um, or, you know, some executive at Disney will want to buy something and we'll go, oh, I'm sorry, Adam can't. And then everything will change. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, you know, but that's, I don't know. Again, it's going to be exciting when we can get to see the work that you're doing. Like you said, maybe when the project is over, then you can, uh, you know, you no, can put the work out there so we can see it. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, the thing is, you like you said, you've been doing this for 35 years. Everybody's been following your career for quite a long time. And, uh, and yeah, it's going to be, you know, odd to have that, this void of not being able to see, uh, you know, the work that you're doing, you know, maybe it's a year to two down the road before we, we see that again. And that's, uh, that's going to be tough for a lot of fans and collectors to swallow. Nah. Also, you know, there's a couple of comments there at the side about the artwork. Mm -hmm. Disney is not keeping this art guys. We get it. It's going to sit in a drawer. It's going to stay toasty warm. It's very safe. Adam is actually getting to keep all his art. Disney has actually been really super about this arrangement. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have gone into it. Well, um, it's all well, super exciting. Yeah. Well, one of the things, you know, you know this was this was my my big mistake for being transparent and honest. Um, I brought up the fact that like I don't work digitally completely. I mean, I worked I work traditionally, and then I scan the artwork in and. Uh, you know, I color it digitally. So unlike virtually everybody else that's working on these projects, uh, there are actual physical components. Mm -hmm. and I, I asked, I asked them, I said, uh, so what happens to that? And they were like, we don't know. <laughs> um, and at one point they were like, I guess you just send it in. And I said, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> you know, uh, and they didn't have an answer. And I said, look, let me just let me keep it. And they, they did. And it's, it was it was it was a fun negotiation. Yeah. And I mean, uh, people people are asking, you know, so we can never sell it, never, ever sell it. Um, right now, the contract says that we can't make any financial benefit off of that artwork. But that's the contract right now. And mm -hmm. that's while Adam's a Disney employee and nothing is forever. And, um, you know, the next iteration, we could change that. Um, or, you know, we could just put that artwork away. And one day when Adam is no longer a Disney employee, you know, when he's old and gray and, you know, we want to, you know, hire some help to get us to the bathroom, that artwork might magically find its way to comic art fans. Exactly. I, will, I will never hire another human being to help me. Get to <laughs> I'm just going to make, I'm going to make it where I, where I'm sitting. Just, just let you know that wife. So on the agreement oh, oh, though. Did... Oh, wait, by the way, I did clean the cat's ass. Thank you. Ah, uh, taking care of business while uh, yeah. Allison's away. That's not a, that's not a, sla that's not a slang. Text. That was the text I woke up to. Uh, the cat's butt is covered in poop. Wet or dry poop? One requires a bath, one you can figure <laughs> out. Oh, man. I scoop the litter box when I'm home, too. So, um, But here, here's litter a question. Litter box is the worst. So I've actually told Adam he can have a girlfriend if she'll do litter boxes. Litter boxes are the worst. Hear that? All those girlfriends out there? Adam could have a girlfriend if she does the litter boxes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just... Now, is the uh, is the the agreement with Disney sort of exclusive where you can't work with, say, if you want to do a, a comic book piece here or there? Or well, uh, this is, is it this... more of a time thing? You just don't it's... want to work more than 40 hours? Well, no, actually, I mean, I, I now am coming up on, now that I'm getting a lot of my previous commitments 
out of the way, um, you know, I'm actually looking at for the first time in many, many years, um, free time. Mm-hmm. Because um, because COVID killed us going to conventions, I did not realize that how much of our our income came from uh, came from convention money. You I know, did. from selling what I said. I did. What? I realized how much because you know we we do that all year long, and that's so significant for us. Right. So I had to compensate. Uh, by taking on more work. And by the time I started working uh, for Disney, I was up to 70, 80 hours a week, and it was affecting me personally, mentally, physically. Uh, it was not good for my health. It was another thing to you know, make uh, a factor to, to, to make this decision. So, and ironically, one of the things that proved most difficult uh, in the negotiations was getting them to let me continue to work for Marvel comics. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, uh, uh, the, the, you know, competition, internal competition of the company. No, they just couldn't understand why I would want to, Oh, you know? And like, I was, I was really, again, I was really transparent. I shouldn't have said a damn thing because right now I could be working on like a wonder woman cover and they wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, uh, uh, what's that? What'd you say? I said, I said, no, they wouldn't know, but you know, they would notice when it came out, but they'd be like, where's the, the thing we needed this week? Somebody yeah. would notice at some point. Yeah. But um, no, I'm, I'm still allowed to do uh, stuff for Marvel. So that's why I said I'm, I, I've only left comics full time. I, I haven't left it. I, 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 have, well, I haven't left it completely. I've left it. I've left it full time, but I'm, I've still got one foot you know, in the pool. Right. Good. And there, I mean, there are restrictions, you know, obviously Adam's Adam's work for for uh, uh, Disney is going to be a priority and they did limit how much he can do. But the fact that they said that, sure, if you want to do a cover a month um, and it's just, you know, does he have the time and financially, is it worthwhile? And even more so, is it something that interests him? You know, this will buy us the freedom for Adam to be able to pass on a project that maybe isn't personally interesting Mm -hmm. and wait for that thing that's really inspiring. And then you're going to get some blockbuster piece of art because yeah, Adam's always, He's never been asked to draw Electra. And then, you know, the Electra, you know, black, white, and red comes along and he gets to do this fabulous graphic cover that the fans loved. Um, he can pick those as opposed to what? There's a, you know, a low selling book and they need an Adam Hughes cover on it. Okay. I guess so. One of those situations. No, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I mean so, you know, so you're just in the best position possible right now, Adam. Just, you know, you're, you're able to get the nine to five ish job where it's, I know it's not 90, nine to five, but it's 40 hours a week. And then you get to pick and choose as long as, uh, you know, it's with, with Marvel when, or, when you'd like to work again. But, but I, I totally understand working yourself, uh, you know, 70, 80 hours. It's, it's not healthy. Um, no, I've been, I've been doing that for really since the pandemic. I'm, I'm kind of that point to where I, you know, I've, I've, I've brought on an editor to help me out, Colin Solon, who's in the chat. He's he's helped me out a great deal the last uh, year and a half. And and I think I'm getting to the point where I, where I need that. I need that break, too. I can't keep working at the rate I am. I mean, I'm not getting any, any younger, but uh, yeah. I want to I, I want to still stay excited and everything. So I totally get where you're at. I think that's uh, I mean, I, I'm envious of, of where, you know, where you're where you're at in your career and that you can you know, you, you can pick and choose those side projects as you feel comfortable with them or if you're that, you know, whether they excite you, you know, that makes, that's the deciding factor for you. You don't have to do any of the grunt work anymore. The nice thing for the fans too, is, you know, if Adam has a a hankering to draw Wonder Woman or Batman, that's Commission City. You know, Mm -hmm. there's nothing that says he can't do artwork of those characters for fans. He just can't do it for publication. So that's where, I mean, that's going to really benefit fans as well. Is it, you know, when, when times become a little more normal, when we, we decide we can start going back to some conventions, which obviously are going to be restricted by Adam's regular work schedule, but he will have that opportunity. And when somebody says, hey, how about Zatanna? And Adam goes, oh, my God, I haven't drawn her in how long? They're going to get that sketch that really, you know, not that it doesn't normally knock it out of the ballpark, but it's going to be, you know, all that pent up, oh, I haven't drawn Zatanna in this long kind of work. Right, right. Yeah, you know, I saw somebody say if there was any art for sale, I'm gonna just put a link into uh, the chat here so that everybody knows uh, where you're 
booth is this weekend. I, and I, now I'm finally looking in there. Yes, you, you have sold a few pieces, haven't you? That's great. We, we sold quite a bit, um, both sort of like some low ball things that, you know, they lingered a little while and I dropped the prices on them, which I don't normally do. And people know that about me. And then some stuff that was right up there at, you know, brand new artwork, priced it as premium. Um, and we are dropping a couple more pieces tomorrow. I don't normally do that, but Adam's uh, got a hankering to put pencil to paper. So we should have a couple more things tomorrow morning. Are we still on for that, Adam? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you'd frozen or if maybe you were mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my orgasm face. <laughs> didn't, has anybody here seen the new Kids of the Hall? The, the new I have team. not yet, but I'm the, looking a, forward to doing it after this weekend. There's a fantastic, you know, now that I, now that I work for, you know, the mouse uh, or whatever, I, I now do Zoom calls. I understand Zoom calls. And there's a fantastic sketch about uh, <laughs> Zoom calls in one of the new episodes. And, uh, you know, Bruce McCullough, <laughs> they say, oh, I think we think he's frozen. He goes, no, this is my, this is my orgasm face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, no, I've I saw the uh, me getting the you know the uh, uh, previews and whatnot every time I go over to Amazon, so I, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, to it's it is it is it's amazing how it's it's exactly it's exactly like the way it was, but it's also exactly the way you remember it. And you know, sometimes when you when you revisit, you go, "Ooh, this is not." Mm, I have I have I have rose tinted memory, and uh, it's just apps. I re I cannot recommend it enough, and. Uh, apparently today, Scott Thompson uh, from the kids tweeted that uh, they've been informed by Amazon that this is the weekend where uh, the, the, the algorithm will decide whether they get another season. <laughs> and I guess, I've got it running upstairs. I'm not actually, I'm down here in my studio working. I've got it running upstairs just so it can count as a viewership. So and, I should uh, probably load it up on my Mac and my PC right now. So we can. Oh, hey, yeah, because it's, we need, <laughs> we need more of this stuff. We need more of this. Isn't that tragic? There's an algorithm that tells them whether or not they should. <laughs> well, that's what he said. Team. I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some, some uh, chubby executive in an office, you know, um, making decisions. But uh, there you go. Um, but but hey. now we're, uh, um, you know, I kind of like. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm nervous, but I'm getting, I'm getting used to it, and uh, uh, you know, learning, learning some new stuff, but also just seeing how. Just seeing how the, the 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 game works from the other side of the the train tracks, you know, it's still storytelling. It's still it's still um, you know trying to trying to bring you know a story to to viewers instead of readers, um, and uh, you know it's just a you know I'm enjoying it. Well, I'm you glad. Know, I and we're it. hoping we're hoping that it'll be so good and things like this art sale today will, you know, be so lucrative that I will be able to buy a new camera um, <laughs> that allows more light in. Because this is actually, I've got to relight in the studio on. Um, and it looks like I'm in David Fincher's basement. It does. Uh, uh, <laughs> this I, is I like, didn't want to say anything. This is like a 13-year-old rocket fish webcam that we got for some reason, like Skype or something. And, uh, you know, when I when I do my Zoom meetings with my my, my producers, they're all in these like gorgeously well lit, high definition, you know, you know, offices. And I'm, you know, I'm in a Werner Herzog film here. Uh, so, uh, you know, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah. Adam's going to get a new camera. You know? Somebody will just put one in the mail for you one of these days. That's uh, I've learned a lot. You know, when I first started doing the live streams a couple of years ago, our my mics were terrible. The uh, you know, I have a ring light now. I mean, but so I've learned how to actually look good on camera because yeah, I, I had a crappy old webcam, and I think this is probably the fourth one. I've kind of just kind of gone through different ones trying to figure out which ones actually work well and and handle lighting the proper way. So if you ever need any pointers, Adam, just let me know. But because it, it, it's not expensive, you just got to buy the right stuff. And then well. I don't know. I'm I'm coming. I'm becoming used to the you know, me looking like some edgy drifter, um, you know, at the edge of the internet. Uh, you know, I, I I sort of like this look. And uh, well, you know, I because I've seen photographs of you in your studio, and I know it's more it's better lit than that. I mean, it's oh yeah. right. So yeah, it looks like you know either it's very smoky in there or yeah. No, it's just and it's, no, it's, it's broad daylight. 
it's broad daylight outside. You know, I've got all the windows open, you know. Um, but also, shout out to this- Dr. Bob for joining us today. Robert Riley's on and he's. Hey. He's, he's, yeah, we haven't seen him in forever, but. Bob, Dr. Bob was one of the very earliest fans I remember seeing at shows, one of the regulars. So, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. Good, good to see you here, man. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, seen Dr. Bob in, I mean, it feels like 10 years probably. It was probably one of the, I know. Uh, the San Diego yeah. shows. No, he was, he's, no, wow. I, you know, it's funny. I, I saw the name and it didn't, didn't ring. It, you know, didn't, right. there's didn't a dog that, that needs, there. hang on, there's a dog that needs to be let out. I'll be right Oh, back. I see that. Don't, Don't tell him I'm here. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I left mine in the camper, so I have two with me, and I left two with him and the poopy cat. So you know, I think I won that equation. You did um, work that, work out that that uh, project real really well. So you're there. Yes. So where where are you right now, by the way? I am in Pendleton, South Carolina, at the Clemson University. It's a a, a horse arena, I think, but I'm running dog agility in mm. 90 degree plus weather. Um, Potter is not happy with me in his giant shaggy coat. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I actually had some car trouble, so I, I missed the first day, but I'm on, I'm on day two of what would have been four days and is now three days. So we're, he's kicking booty and I've got the puppy with me who is just along so that Adam has one less thing to, to annoy him while I'm here. Well, that that's good. Is there is there AC in the vehicle? I have to imagine that. So oh, like, in the camper, yes, the yeah. Camper. That that was our big COVID splurge was that we got like a camper that we can drag behind the car, so it's not enormous, but um, it it was one of those. You know, we do a lot of traveling, we do a lot of events between comics and dogs, and and our personal enjoyment of being on the road. How can we do that in a way that will be safer? And we did, we splurged on a little camper that we can pull behind the car and we love it. I had this big fear that it was going to be one of those purchases that then sits on the curb and like a year and a half later you sell it like at a completely devalued, oh gosh, no, Mm -hmm. I can't get on the road in this thing often enough. And I keep trying to drag Adam with me. We just, we've gone to the beach. I do dog events. Um, We've driven from Georgia all the way up to Ohio in it. Uh, We've had a terrific time. Well, no, I mean, I exactly Dr. Bob, get an RV. There's so much fun. Let your wife go shopping with you. Go to. So here's what, what devastated us was we went to an RV show and you can walk in all of them and see all the different companies and there's no pressure to buy because there's a million people there. So wear your mask. It's fantastic. If you think if you think a comic art sales booth takes up a lot of floor space at a live show, <laughs> go to an RV convention. <laughs> you know, we, it was, and I'm just sitting there going, how do they get all these in here? You know, um, uh, there's a question that I do want to address. Somebody asks, are we going to keep the Patreon going? Yep. I have been completely lame and I recognize the fact that I really dropped the ball of Patreon and Adam has been stepping in trying to keep it going. I got intimidated by the technology, but yes, we love our Patreon fans. We love our patrons. Um, we definitely need to up our game, but we do want to get back to that. It's been a weird like six or eight months of transition for us. And, you know, with Adam with the new job and everything going on, but we do want to keep that going because we love the community we were building. We love the fact that um, we had a venue where we could show people what they really wanted, which was to see how Adam draws and to see artwork being done in real time. I wasn't great about it with the technology. Like, I'm going to hit you up for some of that information. Um, But like one of the- Happy to help. Anything I can do. I posted earlier today. We did a, just through, we did a, a couple screen people. capture. Of, oh, good. We did a screen capture of Adam coloring because people always ask how he colors. And um, I think that was like, it, it was so eye opening for so many folks. And we definitely want to do a lot more of that. And I, I'm going to go ahead and rededicate myself. So for those that have stuck with us, God bless you and thank you. And I'm really determined to, to go back in there and make it worth everyone's while. No, that would be, uh, you know, I was not a uh, follower, I, and I've never actually, I've, I've never used Patreon to, to support anybody, which is silly. I mean, I'm a patron of the arts, and that's one platform that I should probably frequent a bit more. But uh, but I know that the people who support artists, they're really, you know, they, they do it because they, they 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 love your work, you know. And and I've 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 done a, a clearly I, I I'm involved with a lot of different artists, and a lot of them do use Patreon, and and they they love it. I mean, they feel like that's. It's a really great place, a unique place to interact with their fans that isn't like doing it on Facebook or other social media platforms. You can really kind of cater your content directly to what your your fans really want. 
and it was a relatively small group. So it was very much personalized. Um, we had um, people could buy in at multiple tiers and the highest level was they got some very exclusive content. Like Adam did a lesson on perspective. Adam did a Photoshop coloring tutorial. Um, and that group was, you know, depending on your time zone, maybe 10 people would turn up or 20 people would turn up. So you really got, it was like hanging out at a con at the bar afterward. And, uh, you know, so like I said, I do want to go ahead and, and you know, kick that Cedric. back into gear. Because <laughs> Hi, Cedric. I'll be home soon, baby. Aww. <laughs> he is very bummed. He sees me packing and he's like, I'm not going, am I? <laughs> you can tell, right? Well, we uh, that's kind of a higher on our priority list here now that we have uh, some land here in Florida is to get a dog. We have, we've never had a dog. We've always had cats. But uh, as soon as we're settled here, which will probably be mid-August or September. Let me help you. Let, oh, I'm, yeah. the, I'm the crazy dog lady. Even if you want to do rescue, mm -hmm. I can hook you up. Every breed club, like if you decided, you know, I've always wanted a German Shepherd or I've always wanted a Border Collie or every, I, I can hook you up with reputable rescues too. So... Okay. No, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to ask you for advice. I am, I am very happy to be that that pusher on on dogs. Well, I'm, I need one because I've never had a, a dog in my life. To be honest with you, my, my even when I was a kid, my parents always had cats. So it's, that it's was all Adam. new to me. Adam Adam's first dogs were were these guys that we have now. So and you know, of course, when you're ready for a cat, Laura Martin, the colorist, she's your cat lady. She has the main line on where to get cats. So, oh, oh Joyce Chen, she's another one. Arthur Adams' mm -hmm. wife, she, uh, amazing comic book artist in her own right. She uh, she actually has some beautiful dogs, and she knows a lot of people in the dog world too. So, oh yeah, you don't have to go outside it's of awesome. comics to, to get the hookup. It's vaguely vaguely related to collecting art. All this uh, <laughs> it's super related Sorry, because everybody. when you walk to the vet, talking. you can't afford to buy art. Plain and simple. So, you know, Adam, I was like, you know, I'm wondering what I was going to talk about. And I, I looked at your most, well, one thing, you're, actually, I can share one screen here. This is a, you probably already knew it, but you're, you're pretty popular here on Comic Art Fans. Let me share this one screen here. Uh, sorry, lots of clicks to get this thing on here. But uh, this is a, this, I have this car, like a comic artist database on the site. So I track, track different things on there, but uh, and I, and I I don't want to zoom in too much on it, but it talks about like who, which artists have the most art on the site, which ones, uh, which pages are kind of the most viewed by uh, collectors, and then who, which artists' artworks have the most views overall on the site. So, so you rank number two for your artist page, uh, right, you know, behind uh, Monera, of course. But as far as your overall artwork on CAF being viewed by collectors, you, you dominate the competition with 5.432 million views on your artwork on CAF. John Byrne is a distant second at 3.1 million views. So, so you are quite I literally- I used to track these all the time. And when we actively did conventions with sketch lists, when Adam would uh, sit down and the first, he was number one across the board. When, we, when Adam was actively doing sketches at cons, I, I always checked. I always went and looked. I'm like, are we still there? Are we still number one? Yeah, right. I'm very and even with Collected art. You see, you know, Adam's here. He's probably, certainly that's in the top 20. I'd have to count down from top to bottom. But as far as number of pieces of that artist's artwork on the site, you know, you're in the top 20. And, and you know, so that which, you're, you're uh, that's I, the, this column here. Is yeah, like uh, yeah. Uh, and I shouldn't be there because I'm not that prolific. You know, it's like... Well, uh, there's, you know, there's probably a lot of commissions and those sorts of things there, but it shows how how well appreciated your artwork is because people like to share it as well, you know, and that's, uh, there, there's nothing wrong with that. I, but I was always impressed by that. And, and, you know, as far as the overall impressions, your art's always been, uh, you know, the most viewed artwork on the site just for a lot of reasons. I mean, you're well collected. That's that's really a big part of it. Very uh, good. I, it's going to be on my tombstone. He was well collected. He was well collected. Yeah. Actually, Allison and I already already agreed that my tomb, tombstone is going to say, "Still not sketching." You know, <laughs> <laughs> sketch list still I actually like that. Yeah, sketch list really closed. Um, but, well, and, well, you, you see, when, when you draw all these, you know, very 
attractive uh, female figures, you're, you're bound to get a lot of views on Calf. And that's uh, wow. this is like the most popular artwork on Calf. So in a lot of that. I like the Boba Fett is in there. Like it's all these hot chicks and Boba Fett. Right. Boba how does, Fett. How, how does it say yeah. this is a nice Rob Riley? One of my favorite pieces, that, yeah. that's a Mary Jane piece. Um, I remember seeing that, uh, you know, Rob picked that up I and mean, what, a, but yeah, there is no wonder why you're, you're, you know, you're one of, uh, collector's favorite uh, artists on the site and off, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I there's, I, there's no, uh, there's no arguing why, why you're at the top of everybody's list here. Oh, good. Cause I, I didn't want to argue. Here. I know. I, yeah. You weren't I, mean, I, did, I, I came here for pet advice and, uh, <laughs> you know. See that I, I even got a piece on there right there. That was the the jeans. Oh, that's first, you. That's Jean's first day. That was the first artwork I ever got from you, and and, and it was Maureen who had to get it because uh, I had I had struck out I think three years in a row. The first three times I tried to get it on your sketch list at different cons, I couldn't do it. And we were at Heroes Con, so it was Father's Day, and I I think we had my two young children with me, and Maureen said, "You watch the kids." I'm going to go in, you know, I'll wait in line while you do whatever you're going to do with the kids. And so I, I like took them to, there was like a park across the street. So before the show opened, I, I just hung out there and played around with them. And then, and then she came back. She's like, I got on the list. And I'm like, well, getting on the list doesn't mean you're going to get anything. You just got on the list. <laughs> so, and I used uh, to tell people that I used, <laughs> I used to tell people that, and they were so excited they got on the list. Um, but once upon a time when everything was smaller, I could keep track of folks. And I would remember that you had been to multiple shows, you hadn't gotten one yet, you were due in my head, like that was a thing. And after we'd take a list, we'd go back to the hotel room at night. And I'd be like, this guy got four, he's okay if he doesn't get one this show, but this guy's been trying for a year and a half. There came a point where I could no longer keep track. Like I used to be able to, to file all of that away. And you know, when I stopped being able to, it just got harder and harder. Oh, I get it. I mean, well, how could you? I mean, but the thing is, once once you did keep track of it, you did try to make you tr did try to keep things fair. You know, if somebody had gotten a sketch recently, you'd be like, "Hey, I know I saw you uh, at this other show, and you got one. Give everybody else a chance." And that's uh, that, that was the right thing to do, especially as prices were kind of going up, and you and you wanted to make sure you gave. Uh, it just made, it was it was tough. We, we could I could see the the pain you know in, in your your expressions talking with people, and I knew what those conversations were. You know, I mean, so after that, at that point, it was like, well, I'm never going to ask for anything again, because, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's it, I knew how important it was for you to get artwork into as many fans hands as possible. And it just you, like you said, Adam can't he, you, you can't dice them up and, and spread them out so that everybody can can get a piece of them at, at every show or every year. Sitting so. on this side of the table, I don't ask for commissions anymore. Like mm -hmm. I see the struggle and I don't want to do that to our friends. Like I'll go through a portfolio and if there is something there that I like, I will buy it. But on the, on the big, big people that I'm a fan of, I just can't. And on the, on the odd occasion, I will break my rule, but I just, I know how hard it is for, for artists to get artwork into the hands of fans. And I feel like I can't ask, I can't do that to my friends. No, I, I, I totally get it. You know, everybody's lamenting, you know, getting in lines at four or getting up at four to go into a line. I mean, I never, uh, you know, I never enjoyed it. I, I hated, I hated saying it. I, I was like, uh, talk about something else. Right. Right. Yeah. I saw John Higashi yesterday at MegaCon and, uh, you know, he was the, the that king. That was the best site. You'd see John on the sidewalk in front of a convention center at 2 a.m. And he'd have those two big portfolios under his arms. Like if anyone knew what was in those, he'd have been mugged in a heartbeat, but nobody had any idea. And he'd be that first guy in line. And uh, I, I remember the, the, the Heroes Con where we decided to defeat the guys that had the VIP badges. And I took the sketch list out into the line. I went out to the hall. Everybody lined up. And I was like, who's here for Adam Hughes? And people would start raising their hands. And I'd be like, what sketch did you want? Well, and I just, and that began to be trying to outwit the, you know, the folks with the the plan, the folks that, mm -hmm. you know, they had the early access or they were the flippers. And initially it was a hoot. And then it, it was like, oh my God, I just can't be successful at this. Right. Yeah. Rob Riley says he used to pick out the more obscure shows that you, you were going to in hopes of uh, getting on your sketch list versus going to the more popular shows. 
I mean, everybody had to have a strategy strategy. And that was that was kind of interesting and fun. Back. And I, I know it still goes on today, but a lot of people, you know, take their schedule lists even before the show. Well, so they, Dr. They, Bob, they wasn't, that. Dr. Bob, weren't you one of the three guys in Dallas? We hit this show where when we checked into the hotel, there were already three guys in line and we we're like, this is going to be good. This sh It doesn't open for hours and there's already guys in line. When the doors opened, they were the only three guys for the show. And they just, they sat in front of the table and they all got multiple sketches because no one else turned up. And we'd be like, what do you want? What yeah. do you want? What do you want? Okay, now, what do you want? What do you yeah, want? Yeah. It was the whole weekend. Yeah. Three guys, and we, we just called the show Three Guys in Dallas yeah. and they all got multiple sketches. Wow, that would have been the show to go to. Darn <laughs> it. <laughs> um, but hey, hey, we've reached an hour and I have another panel that's going on by, with another moderator. So it's, we're not cutting into their time at all, but uh, maybe the viewership might be not where it should be for uh, Kelly Jones while he's talking about uh, his career. But uh, one, one last question. Da Davi Go asked uh, a, a question for Adam. He's, he said, Adam, do you feel successful in, you know, in your career? And, 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 if, you know, and if so, and if not, you know, how, how would you as a creator define uh, and, you know, yourself as a successful creator. I mean, what, what, what was your, and maybe even looking at that, like maybe you can compare that to where you were at 35 years ago to the where you, where you were at five years ago. I mean, it's probably a moving target. It, it very much is a moving target. I don't know how to define success um, because, you know, it seems traditionally success is tethered to happiness. And I've, I've learned to live on my my, my grumpiness for so long that uh, that would be like cutting off my oxygen supply. Uh, I, I I would say empirically I am successful because, you know, I when I was a kid, I wanted to be a comic book artist. When I was 19, I became a comic book artist. Um, and I did that for 35 years. And of my own volition, I tried to, I've, I've now moved to try something in another artistic field. And Certainly there are factors that play into these things, but play into these decisions. But ultimately I've, I've been able to make my own choices for, I would say at least 80% of my adult life. And uh, I would, I would consider that to be success. You know, I'm, 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 I'm no one else's, I'm no one else's man. So uh, that's, that's, I think it. Yes. Well, well said. I mean, how, how many people can say that they've been able to kind of steer their career in the directions they want 80% of the time? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a that's a pretty good percentage at the end of the day. Yeah. So I got to take, got to take a minute and shout out to Hawaiian Dave and Kim. Kim, we miss you guys too. Just posting and saying hello. Oh, oh all, yep. the, all the friends that we've met from conventions over the years and, and, you know, have become friends, collectors that were terrific people and, you know, we miss them. Well, I can't tell you how fun this has been. And I, you know, I, I, maybe we're not going to get to see, see you guys at cons again real soon, but I hope we, we get to, to, to meet sometimes in the near future. It's been far too long. And, uh, you know, maybe as of, as of right now, we are signed up to do San Diego Comic Con. We oh, you have, are. Okay. We have our airfare. We do not have a hotel. Hey, anybody have a hotel room? Drop me a line. Maybe we'll get you on a sketch list. There, that's there. You go, and you know, of course, I'm not. That's the one show I, I am definitely not doing because of the move. I'm. Uh, that's around the same time I'm moving back from Ohio to Florida for the last time, I, I think. So I, I'm passing on San Diego this year, hopefully next year, and maybe Como next year. But uh, well, so there you have it, everybody. You guys will be at uh, at uh, San Diego Comic Con next if anybody wants to uh, get to see you both in person. But uh, assuming such... nothing happens between now and then, you know, everything is up in the air based on COVID, and if. You know, people at Adam's job are like, dude, we need you. Although I think he already told them he was going. So, but, you know, the, for the, us they right want, now. They're very, they want me to come up to L.A. and, and, and visit in person. So, well, Oh, that's, that's fun. We could, uh, we could go to, I don't know, maybe there's a theme park nearby that we could go to. I don't know. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Allison, have a lot of fun at uh, the dog show. I hope everything goes really well Thank for you. for you and uh, Adam. You know, I can't see what's on your drawing table, but I guess we, we're not allowed to see what's on your drawing table. So, um, you know, I hope one day we get to you'll you know whenever you get past this next project, I, I look forward to seeing what you're working on. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and you know, I, I know we're all going to miss getting to see uh, regular updates from you on uh, you know on, on your full time gig. But uh, at some point in time. We'll at least get to see some of the work you're doing, and uh, I look forward to that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. 
right. thanks. It's been great being here, and it's been great seeing so many uh, names of people we know and, and that we miss seeing in person, and we hope to connect with all of you guys soon. You're here. All right, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, Adam and Allison, and have a great weekend.